into this, and then I'll talk a little bit about it, explain um, the posters and the pages that you may be holding. Uh, and if you want to scan it, then you can read along with me. But so here's the beginning. Um, speak to me in code, a guide to effective writing. <laughs> About this project, Speak to Me in Code is structured as a guide to effective writing, yet the example sentences, definitions, and writing advice point towards a romantic affair between a woman, the protagonist, I, she, me, her, Justine, and a married man, you, you, he, he, Mark. Table of Contents. Speak to Me in Code, a guide to effective writing, Table of Contents. Introduction, a letter. Two, the importance of proper writing. Three, understanding basic grammar. Four, understanding conjunctions. Five, understanding basic punctuation. Basic punctuation. Basic punctuation of writing lesson. Changing the punctuation of a sentence can change its meaning. Take, for example, these sentences. I, comma, like you, comma, relish in activities of questionable morality, period. <laughs> I like you, period. Relish in activities of question mora questionable morality, exclamation point. The first sentence draws a comparison between the subjects, I and you, linking them in their ability to enjoy activities that others may deem questionable. The second line of text provides a direct statement followed by a stern command. Whereas the latter is direct and short-tongued, as if said by a dominant person to one who is eager for such precise linguistic control, the first sentence is friendlier. It places I and you on equal footing, so to speak, and an even-handed conversation with one another. Which sentence do you prefer? A, the commas, inviting and friendly, as in I, like you. B, the period, direct and firm, as in I like you. Okay, so I'm going to read this one, Understanding Basic Punctuation. Um, but while I do that, I'm going to put this up on the screen. Um, so the overall, it's a guide to effective writing, and there's a story um, mixed in there that you, as you read this guide, you start to understand. It feels a little uncanny at first, and then you understand the story that's unfolding. Um, the posters were designed to um, relate to, I'm not saying here, I'm saying a conference that has to do with the study of language, um, and it might, you know, relate to uh, linguistic expression. And so there's meant to be sort of an uncanny, you know, is it here, is it not here, is it real, did it happen? Um, there are 12 posters total, and six of them are specific places. So there's, you can see them on that side of the room, the pier, the park, the market, um, the church, the tavern, and the gallery. Um, so those stories take place in particular places, and then there are more abstract places, anywhere, somewhere, uh, everywhere, nowhere. And so if you all put up this code, if you want to scan either from the peer poster or this code, then you can read along with me. Um, or if you want to scan from another poster, you can read another part of the story. Um, so these are QR codes. You probably have a scanner. If you don't, <laughs> excuse me, you can um, download them from uh, the App Store. It's just any sort of um, QR code scanner or a barcode scanner. Um, so I'm going to read that using basic conjunctions. And, okay. Using basic conjunctions. And, but, so, or. Conjunctions are words that combine sentences. They take two distinct elements and fuse them into one. The way they do this depends on which conjunction is used and how it's used. Let's begin with four conjunctions. And, but, so, or. Take these two distinct sentences, for example. He walked down the hall. I looked at the floor. Nothing about these two sentences suggests that they are in any way related. That is, until we use a conjunction. Using the word and will bring these short sentences into relationship with one another. He walked down the hall, and I looked at the floor. Two universes have now combined. He and I are in separate, are in the same space and time, joined by the conjunction and. Further, there is a connection between he and I, but the exact nature of said connection has not yet been specified. Using and is only one way to combine these sentences. Here's another. He walked down the hall, but I looked at the floor. Whereas the former example, and, positions he and I in the same place and time, the latter adds a bit of complexity because it suggests conflict, but suggests that there is a disconnect here, something is not easy in this interaction. The reader is left wondering why the first person protagonist, the I who looked at the floor, did so. What is the conflict? Was there somewhere else the protagonist wanted to look besides the floor? The reader looks to the first half of the sentence for examples and finds he. Did the protagonist want to look at him? Now the reader is curious, eager to discover the reason the protagonist looked away. He walked down the hall, a silk tie loose around his neck, but I looked at the floor, afraid he'd see into my soul if my eyes met his, afraid that all my insides would in that moment burst out. 
Ah, that explains things. It seems the protagonist here is making an intentional decision, a decision to look away for reasons of self-protection. We might then change the word choice from but to so. So implies a causal relationship. For example, he walked on the floor, dangerously close to where I found myself sitting. So I looked at the floor, abruptly refocusing my eyes on the ground. So he would not see my urgency, the way my very soul called out for him, the way I was sitting not on this mundane chair at all, but rather on a cosmic seesaw, a chaotic limbo between a desperate surge of lust and the train of state I've taught myself to have all these years. It seems the character is in a bit of a quandary here, so let's promptly introduce another word. Rather than so, let's use the word or. Or can imply dichotomy, as in, are you single or are you married? <laughs> Consider our sentence now. He walked by me or I looked at the ground. The word or tells us that the statement is true and so the look at the other must not be true. Which one is true? If he walked by me is true, then I looked at the ground cannot be true. He walked by me and I looked at the ground. And I, I'm sorry. He walked by me and I did not look at the ground. I looked directly at him. Alternatively, if I looked at the ground is true, then he walked by me is not true. I looked at the ground, on which he knelt as he tied my ankles together with this Italian silk tie. He did not walk by me, no. He walked directly to me. <laughs> Just as or can imply a binary opposition, as in single or married, it can also imply a range of choices. For example, one may ask, are you in a faithful marriage, or an open marriage, or a family marriage, or none of the above? What type of marriage are you in, sir? <laughs> Let's see how this use of or can apply to our example. He walked by me or I looked at the ground. Or did I? Did I look at the ground or did my gaze meet his? Or did our eyes meet? Or did I stand up in that moment? Or did I lean over and pick up my books? And if I did, did he notice my A-line skirt? Or did he notice my hands quiver a little as he neared? Or did he notice me at all? Or had he noticed me before? Or was he trying not to notice? And if so, what does that feel like? And all of these things I wondered. Or was I wondering something else? Like what it would feel like? touch his skin or to look in his eyes or to end his marriage or to join his marriage or to menage a trois or to seduce his wife or to co-write a novel or the study of language or to kiss just once quite slowly and now. All these things I wonder, or did I? As you can see, using the conjunction or opens a range of possibilities. In conclusion, a note of caution. You'll notice the first sentence in the above paragraph is one of great length. This typifies what is called a run-on sentence. <laughs> Just as the word hand, like the power of love, has the ability to combine distinct elements into one unified and cohesive entity, the sentence, a run-on sentence suggests that perhaps too many distinct elements have already been combined. Run-on sentences defy the bounds, norms, and definitions of correct linguistic protocol. They exist far beyond acceptable rules of grammar and should be strictly and immediately separated into safely segregated units, no matter how passionately these phrases may desire to be connected to be together, the fragments must be separated. The perfect tool for this for the perfect tool for this is forceful punctuation, a firm period, a resolute exclamation exclamation point, or perhaps most appropriately for our story, an imploring and unresolved question mark. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to skip over to Peter, um, which you may have also on the phone. And this is one of the six somewhere places. The act of spotting a typo gave Justine a thrill that few experiences could rival. It afforded her the opportunity to describe the linguistic indiscretion to Mark, which she did in precise detail. So when Justine picked up a pamphlet inviting her to, quote, post conference drinks at the pier, P-E-E-R, she nearly choked with delight. How could anyone mistake pier, P-I-E-R, for pier, P-E-E-R, she wondered. I peer at him through the blinds as he drives up to his office. I do this every morning, or as I can only meet him at the pier on special occasions. <laughs> Adult adulthood adultery. This, so this is where the story enters um, the code for writing, and this is um, on linguistic connect correctness. Adult noun is a person of a certain age, generally between teenager and other, a person in the prime of life. Adult adjective refers to mature content, generally considered inappropriate for younger people. Adulthood refers to phrases in life when one is between childhood and elderhood. Adultery is the act of engaging in sexual relations with someone other than one's spouse. He said, I do like being an adult. She said, yes, I enjoy the freedom of adulthood. They said, what if this doesn't have to be called adultery? What if we just call it love? <laughs> <laughs> so this will link back to the usage guide. I'm going to switch over and read one other thing real quickly, and then I'll come right back to that. 
um, truth. So this, those definitions are um, linked in the story. They, there's no, you can't get to this from places or from the table of concepts. You have to be reading to get into these. Um, truth. Now, an accurate and correct statement of fact, as in, the truth is, I love you. Love poem. U is for unsustainable, obviously. O is in, obviously. O is in, the second letter of, love. U is for unsustainable, will it last? L is in, last. L is in, the first letter of, love. But last implies time, and there is no time here. Only words, no time is in duration, or when it's over, or beginning and the end. And certainly no time is in something as mundane as clock. No, T is only for touch, not for time. Only for temptation, only for true. And the third letter in true is you. L as in, first letter of love, U as in, you. V as in visceral, V as in, third letter of, E as in everything, love, E as in, the fourth letter of, unsustainable is, even that, love, don't you see, even that, even the fourth letter of unsustainable is, you, because I think everything is, love, you. No to Benny, I think this might be a love poem. If that requires unsustainable, then bring it on. There is, after all, an alternate spelling to the traditional L-O-V-E. Love is alternatively spelled the U as in L-U-V, as in I love you. Not traditional, perhaps, not condoned, but nonetheless, true. <laughs> all right, so back to adult, adult, adultery. Um, this links into the uh, on-linguistic correctness. On linguistic correctness, competent people know how to use language correctly. However, even competent people forget themselves sometimes. It's not uncommon for even the most competent of individuals to find themselves at a crossroads, unsure how to deal with irregular action verbs, or which preposition accurately fits their situation. There are many linguistic rules that need to, one needs to be aware of in order to express themselves properly, and this guide is here to help. Beside, besides. Hmm. Beside, besides. Beside adjective means by the side of. Besides adjective means except for or in addition to. It's hard to breathe when he stands beside me. I try to occupy my mind with thoughts besides those of him, but my mind usually wanders back. <laughs> Everywhere, anywhere, somewhere, nowhere. So this is the entry that the um, installation was made around. And there are two posters for anywhere, two for everywhere, two for nowhere, and six for somewhere. Um, so this is the entry. Words for place. Everywhere, anywhere, somewhere, nowhere. All four terms describe potential places, yet each word works slightly differently. Everywhere refers to all places at once. Anywhere refers to an available place that has not yet been determined. Somewhere references a specific place. Nowhere means no place at all. Sample sentences. Everywhere. I see reminders of you everywhere. Anywhere. I will meet you anywhere. Somewhere. You pick somewhere, and I will meet you there. Nowhere. There is nowhere. I will not meet you. <laughs> All four terms are singular nouns conjugated with plural verbs. Thus, the letter S is not needed. I.e., it is correct to say everywhere, not everywheres, anywhere, not anywheres, somewhere, not somewheres, and nowhere, not nowheres. The letter S. He called his wife Mrs. S. S thought Justine, that which makes a noun plural. S thought to steam, that which signifies possession. Mrs. Sherman, Mrs. Sherman, Mrs. S. Herman, 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 Mrs. S. Herman. Mrs. S. Herman. Mrs. S. Herman. Justine didn't mind Mrs. S, but she didn't see why Mrs. S had to be so close to Herman. <laughs> Anywhere. And then she happened upon a curious sight, a white arrow pointing away from a red door. What might this mean, wondered Justine, it looked like a riddle. Metaphor, now, something that symbolizes something else. A light bulb is a symbol for an idea. A puzzle is a metaphor for life. A red door is a symbol for temptation, it's a choice. A high heel shoe is a symbol for seduction. A wine glass is a symbol for romance. A ring is a symbol for matrimony. The symbols are just symbols until they are lit, thought Justine, taking a bite of an apple, and 